guys doing it's your girl owami and welcome back to another episode of to hell and back now you guys already know what i'm rocking or who i'm actually rocking fs emporium she's the one that has been sponsoring us throughout this show i do actually have a full picture in this dress so i'm sure it's gonna be somewhere here so that you can you, you guys can just see how how much it slays honey okay and um yeah i'm gonna make sure that i leave her link in the description box down below so if you've, you've got any event that needs you to wear anything she even makes wedding gowns guys there's nothing she cannot do okay so just make sure that you actually contact her um the link uh to her instagram is gonna be in the description box down below i also want to say a huge shout out to manu media because they're the ones that are responsible for the whole production manu media is also going to be there on the 16th of december in the production side of things when we're having our next master class which will be on the 16th of december as i said i'm sure that the banner will be here you should go ahead and take the numbers and do the thing that needs to be done the last disclaimer that i'm also going to give is that i'm sure that you guys will be able to hear a little bit of noise guys i'm really so sorry there's nothing we can do um it uh, it annoys me as well it irritates me but there's nothing i can do so please stop commenting the noise i know there's nothing i can do guys this is season one for season two i'm sure we'll be at a better place you know um or in a better place but anyway ninjas today i'm actually here with a queen a gorgeous, gorgeous Han, <laughs> Queen Ndando. <laughs> How are you? I'm coping. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You are so gorgeous. Thank you. So are you. I couldn't stop complimenting you. <laughs> Guys, her skin is like butter. Okay. <laughs> like your skin is so beautiful. I've been here sweating and everything and you are just fresh faced. Uh, I'm sweating. It's very hot today. But you, your skin does not show that. Is it? No. Thank you. <laughs> you look very, very, very beautiful. Thank you. So thank actually, you. I contacted you. Yes. On, on on TikTok. So basically, guys, um, there was a day that I actually wrote on my Instagram stories, and I was like, guys, I need uh, women that have been love scammed, if you know, and those that want to actually come to the show. And then someone actually dropped your name, and they were like, oh, please check her out on on TikTok. Okay. And when I went there, that was when I immediately was like, hey, babe, how are you? And then because I had never even come across your profile, yeah. Um, and obviously you were just so you know, uh, how can I so welcoming? You know, I asked for your numbers and. And that's when we started talking yeah. um we are actually here so you and i we shared the same passion exposing and obviously making sure that there's justice served yes, when justice, it comes to please. this love scammers out here mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so i mean you know um i do hope that you're comfortable you can go ahead and share your story on as to what happened but before my people always love to hear like someone's background so you can just go ahead and start off by introducing yourself <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Ndando. My surname is Ngumbela. Maiden surname Lingani. Mm -hmm. um, originally, I come from Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. um, both my soon-to-be ex-husband and I mm -hmm. come from the same area. Okay. Yeah. I grew up in the Eastern Cape, went to school in the Eastern Cape, and then I have been in between Eastern Cape and Johannesburg all mm -hmm. my life. Okay. Yeah. And then in 2015, I decided to come to Northwest. Okay. I decided, you know what, I want to, to be in a place where I've never been before. Then found myself in northwest okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay so yeah. you and your hu husband will soon to be ex-husband because you're still wearing your ring you know i saw that um how long were you guys and married? people are so like they don't some is, are, are very pissed off they're like can I, one of my social media friends was mm -hmm. like shouting at me like literally so Yesterday, Wuti. Oh, funny, Gigi, Gigi, Pelayon. Gilas, Lele. 
under the bridge or something. <laughs> like, woman, I don't understand why are you still wearing this ring? And I was like, I don't have an explanation, but maybe if he, my husband mm-hmm. was the one who bought the ring, maybe Bengzo mm-hmm. but Yeah, you bought it yourself. Okay, I'm a girl. If I bought it, I'm keeping it. I still have one of mine because it was my money that spent on it. Okay. Though I don't wear it like on this finger, obviously, on this finger, obviously. But sometimes I would, you know. But I still have it because I'm like that. That was my box. <laughs> you, I'm also a divorcee. Okay, but now we're wasting a little ring yeah. for umshat waku. Whoa. Oh, your yo, your engagement to what? Girl, I even paid most of my love. Let's, let's not even go there. <laughs> Yeah, let's not even, you know, so yeah, I, I spend more than what people spend even on the ring. So, yeah, but yeah, it was my money 100%. That's why it was my card. So, oh, yeah. that's such a relief. You thought you're the only one? Yes. No. What many I've just, been judged. Nah. I've been insulted. Mm-hmm. Insulted and um, you. That's so long. I, oh my gosh. Why, why, why did I share my story out there? No, (laughs) just to relax, you know, we've been there, done that, got the divorce decree to prove it and what. Yo, no, 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 no. I actually even spoke about it publicly because I'm not ashamed because this is how we actually educate the younger generation to say, guys, please don't do this. But when we don't speak, they end up actually falling in the same um, hole that we fell in. So I believe that we are that generation that will actually change it. Uh, You cannot shame me over something I shared with you and oh, you I'm can feel that, that you can shame me. No. <laughs> no. I thought she's I'm go- listening to you right now. No. Thank you. Yeah, I, no, yeah, she actually she now learned, not, right? Yeah. So she will never offer to pay even part of her own level because she knows what happened to her mom. But if her mom was quiet, then imagine like, you know, ten years or twenty years from now, your daughter comes, maybe she's Lord forbid, going through <laughs> something and she's like, Oh no, you know, I have to be with my lobola and you're like, What? And then you will wish you actually shared with her. Yeah. So no, don't yeah. ever, don't let anyone shame you. Any, uh, on top of that, for them to know, you told them. So yes, exactly. You can't shame me over information I gave you. <laughs> I'm a shameless human being. <laughs> and you're so beautiful. Shameless is the name of my game. Forget <laughs> about it, you know. But yeah, how long um, were you and your soon-to-be ex-husband married? Um, since 2019. Okay. Yeah, but we dated um, years back. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and relationship here too. Yeah, turned to be serious. Uh, when I was already a traffic cop by mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now I was at school. Oh, he was at school. Yes, so Linda, but it was from way back to the school. My place, I don't know if I should call it that. So you were like because Bengi's transporter, um, Tagela, um, Fashela. You you used to transport yourself to visit him, to visit him, and do everything right financially. <laughs> no, it's love, trust and believe. Like we've been there, <laughs> we've been there, done that. Yeah, and so. then now, Sazoba Sira's foot again. Mm-hmm. So this is how we together. Mm-hmm. So we decided to go to let's get married. Mm-hmm. When when we got back together, mm-hmm. um, he was he, he was down and out. Like he was suffering a lot. I don't know what happened because remember we we broke up mm-hmm. when we were still in the Eastern Cape. Mm-hmm. We broke up mm-hmm. and then. Um, he went to Gauteng and I went to Northwest. There was no communication whatsoever. And via social media, we managed to find each other again and reconcile. We got back together. Mm-hmm. And by that, by that time, he was like down and out. Like he didn't have any money, he didn't have no job. He was working for a company where he was getting paid 400 rands a week. He was staying in a small shack. Um, 
he was even embarrassed to take me to that shack. But I insisted because now we, we, we are back together and we are, we are planning a future together. Mm -hmm. So I need to, to know where you're staying. Yeah, where mm -hmm. you're staying. So I had to visit the place and as I got there, yo, I could see good, okay, the guy, yeah. He's struggling. He's struggling. There's one bed, no linen, no curtains, uh, no cupboards, no carpet whatsoever. It's just a bed, a blanket, one pillow. Um, what do you call this in dish? Mm. Evascom. Evascom, yes. Yeah. Uh, small wardrobe there by the corner. And two dishes, three spoons, one cup, you know. Yeah, so I thought, okay, um, let me prove my love to him. So I bought everything. I surprised him. Uh, when he came back from work, I made sure that when he comes back from work, he's going to find a different place. Place, yeah. So like plus minus, how much would you say you spent to buy everything that was in um, there? I spent more than 6,000 rents. And then it became an ongoing thing mm -hmm. every month. I would buy something new, buy him clothes, cosmetics. Um, I fixed his TV. I fixed his old uh, fridge, you know. Mm -hmm. It it became an ongoing thing, and then he introduced me to his kids. He even had kids. How He's many? Got about four different baby mamas. Any? But did you know? I did not. I did not know at first. I only knew about one. Okay. That I used to share him with back in back in the Eastern Cape. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the only baby mama that I you knew about. Know, yeah. Yes. And then at a later stage, and we were already married by then. Mm -hmm. That's when I found out that there were I three baby mamas. Yes. So we all got married in in November of 2019. Of 2019. Mm -hmm. November, December, January, February, March, April. In May, a child was born. <laughs> a baby boy from what's this place called can you shut up <laughs> a boy was born <laughs> from Fundy <Fandibay> Bay Park <laughs> and I had to step in well, because now the family is threatening me as well I had to step in as a wife I had to buy clothes for the baby. I had to buy everything for the baby. So this child was conceived whilst you were dating him. The time you were actually furnishing his place and everything, he was busy actually impregnating over yes, there. Yes, the time I'm excited, uh, organizing the wedding, the child is being conceived, oh, you know. And then you find out how many months into your marriage, like about six months? Yeah, in, in six months' time. That there's a baby that got there's born. A baby. So which family was threatening you? The family of this girl? Yes. What were they threatening? That they're going to take you to court for support? Yes. And then they're going to kill my husband. They're going to bewitch him. So if I love him, I'm going to have to step him. in and save his life. And that's what I did. Yeah. And my husband's family also convinced me. And then to you know what did him. he say? <laughs> Yo, that guy. He, he said, um, "This is what is happening, and I don't know what to do, but I will understand if you break up with me." So that was the second child that you were finding out. Um, yes, that was the second child. And then the third and the fourth. Um, remember, there's this baby mama that the I already first one. knew yes. about, and yes. then the, there's another one that I found out about um, 
few weeks after our wedding and then the third one on the sixth month <laughs> and then the fourth one I just found out about her last year July Guru he doesn't even like protection Nji no that's not his thing no he likes it raw wow and he's proud you should see his videos on TikTok he's very proud about it that he has four kids with four women does he have a child with you no I mean thank God no he you doesn't know. and he's insulting me about that as well on social media that I'm bitter because other women they're giving him what he wants but you have a child they they're giving him children beautiful children and me and I failed to to do so or he failed <laughs> to do so with you <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you were just too strong of a woman for him. Maybe he's just too weak of a man, you know. We don't know. <laughs> Maybe you is the problem, Shibubu. I mean, <laughs> so disrespectful. Yeah, very. He was also physically abusive towards you, towards me, and I would take myself to the doctor. After he has uh, I physically take assaulted you to the doctor. <laughs> and then I also suffered um, depression, depression and minor stroke and I had to pay for my um, therapy sessions and medication and what not you see and you were suffering the depression and minor stroke because of him because of him. his actions listen we got married in 20 in, in 2019 2020 there's a, a baby born 2021 he's forcing me to accept polygamy that's when I suffered from depression and minor stroke who did you want to marry one of the baby mamas yes <laughs> which one baby number what um, baby mama number two so the the one that the baby you found out about the baby just a few weeks, a few after, weeks after the wedding after the wedding yes and he's a brokey. Yes, but I, yeah, I was pushing him and maintaining him and the kids. And even when I, when we visit home, I will do everything. I'm the one who's responsible for transport. I'm the one who's responsible for groceries. When I get to his homestead, I must buy. Um, gifts for the elders, I must buy groceries, I must buy electricity, I must fill up the gas stove, I must do everything, I cook, I clean, I do all these things. So you were like the wife and the husband, yes. you take care of the wifely duties and you also have to take care of his duties as a man. Yes. Why do you think you were doing that? Hmm. Some ladies, they say maybe um, I'm too desperate. I don't think so. I think people actually like literally um, misunderstand the word desperate and they throw it out there so so light, so 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 mm. so simple, mm. right? Mm. Do you think you're a people pleaser? Yes. <laughs> Because yes. that can stem off of people pleasing. It's not um, necessarily desperation. But maybe it is. You know why am, am I saying that? Mm -hmm. When he, he was convincing me to, to marry him and to marry him in community of property, he used my background. He used um, my current situation that I'm an orphan, I don't have um, a family. So now he wants to step in. He wants me to to have someone in my corner. You understand? He wants me to have a shoulder to cry on. He wants me to have someone to stop uh, this bravery of having to face life by, yourself. I, by myself. You understand? He wants to be there for me. He's going to be my brother. He's going to be my sister. He's going to be my friend. He's going to be my husband. He's going to be everything that I need. He's going to be my family. 
So now we are going to build ourselves um, a family, a family, yeah. just the two of us, and start our own legacy together. Mm -hmm. Because he's also from a difficult background, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, his mother abandoned him when he was uh, one month old and he he was raised by his stepmother and his aunts exchanging with him mm -hmm. exchanging turns with him you know so he he did not have also a family structure a of his own like yes that. yes yeah. so now we we had something in common and he used that to win my trust to win my heart you know yeah and out of community meant that i don't trust him enough <sighs> i don't trust him that even if I die, because he knows that I, I, I I'm suffering from a heart condition as well. Mm -hmm. So he, he he wanted me to prove to him that I do trust him, that he's gonna be there for me, even if I die before him, he's gonna be able to to, to look after the kids. You know. How many children do you have? I have two. You have two. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay, a son and a daughter, ne? Yes, okay. Yeah, only I'm looking at them right now. <laughs> <laughs> and some and beautiful. Okay, okay. Yeah, so... Desperate me. <laughs> because I think somewhere, somehow, I did need that security of having someone in my corner and a man in the house um, I did have this picture uh, you know of having a, a proper family mm -hmm. I wanted my kids to grow up in a proper home mm -hmm. where there is a mom mm -hmm. and a dad mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. because um, my son cannot share everything with me mm -hmm. there are things that he would like to share with another male mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i thought okay this is it and i've seen him around my kids and i'm comfortable with him around the kids you know mm -hmm. so that's when we got married in community of property and right now he wants to wipe me clean I mean, okay, we're going to be getting into that, obviously, but I just want to say this. From my perspective, I think that there's a difference between desperation and someone that just needs someone around. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? Someone, mm. like, I feel like we all need someone. And so if someone comes and says, hey, I'm going to be this person for you, I'm going to be this and this and this and this and this. I mean, obviously, if you don't have that, you are going to want to have that. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I, And you're not being stupid for believing that. No, no, no. You're <laughs> not being stupid for believing because it's, 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 it's a very different thing when someone knows your background and they know how to manipulate. Especially if you get a narcissist. I'm not saying that he is, but I'm saying that if you get someone that knows exactly what you need and they come and they promise you that I'm going to actually be all that, yeah. trust and believe you are going to go for that, not because you're desperate, but because of obviously they, they knew which buttons. It's manipulation yes, basically, yes, understand? Yes, so, yes, yeah, yes. you they know. They give me all the reasons to, to believe them. Yeah. Yes. So, you are saying that he now wants to wipe you, but what I want to find out is this, because it seems like you did a lot and you beg as a lot for a lot. For a right. lot. So what know? was actually the, the final straw that broke the camel's back? Okay. Um, apparently, when he came back to me, mm -hmm. he was very broken hearted. Apparently, he lost the love of his life. Um, there's a special woman that he was dating and the woman just disappeared without a trace. The family did not know where the lady disappeared to. So he was broken hearted. So Dando here 
was a replacement. It was nothing but uh, a rebound, if I should call it that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now, last year, last year, July, the lady resurfaced out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Um, first week of July, my husband uh, was not picking up my calls, blocking me, doing all these funny things. He wasn't coming Then home. I thought, I thought to myself, uh, he's, he, he was now working um, around Val, oh, and okay. I'm working in Northwest. Oh, so okay. You were not staying together. Yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Yes. I was visiting him. Okay. But there were rules. Okay. I I, I couldn't just budge in. At any given moment. At your husband's place? Yes. <laughs> I had to make an appointment to see my husband. And I'm sure even the sheets he was using there, sheets you bought. Yes. But you have to make an appointment. Yes. You're too yes. sweet, man. Yes. You're too nice. Yeah. But so when he blocked me and did all those funny things, I thought, okay. He has started again with his cheatings and and but I know he's gonna come back. You know? It was starting to become a norm <laughs> for me, you know. I was starting to, to accept everything that he he brings home, you know. I was starting to uh, to accept his bad behaviors and bad habits because now even his family um kind of programmed me to accept everything that he does if I don't want to lose him and them as a family, you know. Even when I found out about his polygamy, I found that through Facebook that he got married to another woman, that he actually wants polygamy. How did you find out through Facebook? Okay. We had a small misunderstanding in the afternoon. It was on a Saturday. He drove off because now I've pushed and made sure that he must own a car as well because he was feeling small. Did you buy him a car? But I assisted. (laughs) He was feeling small that um, he's not yeah he, owning a car yeah and i'm i'm owning a car so he felt small mm-hmm. so i had to make sure that he owns a car as well so that he can fit in his you were striking his ego yeah mm-hmm. and then he took a drive i thought okay he's just being himself dramatic and all that he's going to come around he's going to come down i'm going to give him a call later and beg him as usual mm-hmm. beg him to come home maybe he's going to sleep over at his best friend's place and blah 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 my thoughts the next day he's not coming home and then he starts to become frustrated. I start to panic, I start calling people, his aunts and his friends, all of them, they like, no, we haven't seen him. I started to panic, I went to the police station, they said, no, let's wait at least uh, 24 hours, 24 hours yeah. you know, then you can come tomorrow to report him as a missing person. Okay, on Sunday, on um, Sunday, mm-hmm. I received a call from a church member and then she says to me, hey, Mrs. Mumbel, when last did you log into your Facebook account? And I was like, yo, yesterday afternoon. And she says to me, please log in because I don't know how to break the news to you. Break the news? That's when I started to panic. Mm -hmm. I was coming from the shower when I received her call. Mm -hmm. And then I look into my Facebook and then (gasps) the shock of my life. Mm -hmm. My husband is half naked. And he's in the Eastern Cape with his second baby mama. And there's already more than 40 comments People are congratulating him for the decision that he has made. He's declaring his love for this woman and 
he's telling the world that he wants polygamy and if i don't want it then i must just wait that's what he wrote off. on facebook yes so wait he was I half naked dreaming where they like in bed <sighs> with their child happy family yeah this man is so disrespectful but okay ne yo and <laughs> the church members have already seen the post my colleagues have already seen the post and some other people who knows me so what was your next move i made a call to and him. i was praying that this is a prank or we they photoshoot uh, photoshopped the the picture or something somebody is trying to to break my marriage or something i was praying that this is a sick some sick prank or something but when i made a call he put me on speaker and said yes um the second madam is also here you can talk to us how can we help you i'm screaming i'm screaming how can you do this to me what the hell why you know and then he said it is what it is take it or leave it or leave it so what choice did you take then Oh I tried to be dramatic I tried to fight them I tried to report to the family to help me to fight this to to break this affair or relationship whatever they call it but even the family there was nothing much they could do but then only now that I realized and found out to be the the family as knew. well knew all along they always know man oh. they knew all along that no there's no love here <laughs> love is not part of this marriage i am whatever they are calling me maybe uh, i i you i can imagine all the names that they are calling me behind the scenes <laughs> so okay they knew all along that my husband does not love me he's not in this marriage for love for love because at that time you were a, <laughs> a traffic <laughs> officer right yes <laughs> and then i moved to northwest and i still worked for the same department public safety mm -hmm. you know yes <laughs> so now um after you find out everything obviously after the drama is now done um what next now even the family now was like i i need to come down come down and accept and this accept this mm. and now i had to to call them to say okay i accept i accept and then yo they made them hmm. uh, not her telling me that as from today going forward you are going to respect me hmm? You are not going to say anything negative about me huh? or this relationship with your husband. You are not going to do anything funny. So she's making the rules now. And then um <laughs> the first rule that I had to follow was to go on Facebook so that people can see. I needed to go to to their posts and comment and comment and welcome her to the family. Oh. So you had to do that. I still hate myself for that. I, I, I every time I think about it it still ooh. Ne? I <laughs> Ooh. No, it's okay. I had to to write that comment um where they they they, they were telling the world that they are officially together. and i had to go and comment and say welcome to the family my queen yo and then yo from then they were controlling everything that i do everything that i say if 
I, I went to church and uh, I preach about Hana and Benina, for instance. They, when I come back home already, there's a meeting and they're fighting with me that I'm being sarcastic. So now I had to avoid such verses, you know. I had to to avoid negative posts because they felt as if I'm attacking them or I'm being sarcastic or I haven't really accepted their union. So for you to go and write this comment, that was maybe how many days after the post was up? Um, after two weeks. After two weeks, you yeah. had to go and say welcome. Yes, yes. And I then after that, it was too painful, and I did not know what to do. Did he ever come back home? He did. Now, um, when he's home, I have to keep quiet, like a side chick. When this woman, let us call her Z. Mm -hmm. Z would call make video calls long video calls until 11 p.m i'm quiet all along i'm listening to their conversations that romantic they're telling each other how much they miss each other you know how good it was the last time they were together he would also post you oh, it was very nice uh, last night i was with my fiance Hmm. They even uh, made a public post telling the world that they are expecting their second child. Meanwhile, you and him were struggling to fall pregnant. I had a miscarriage because <laughs> your the stress was too much. I had a miscarriage. I'm so sorry for your And then he still blamed me for it. He says I, I, I aborted the child deliberately, so I killed his unborn, unborn child. I'm evil, I'm what, what, you know. Okay, so last year, the true love came back, resurfaced. She resurfaced. I shame. I shame. <laughs> I. Let me give her a trophy or an award, Aisham. Yes, Tosa, Uslali say pants is so. Even the one that All was the Madame women, Rose, you will do this, you will do that. Yes, remember, even the, 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 the first baby mama, she has been here hmm. throughout the, the, the marriage. She has been breathing on my neck. Yes, she, she has been calling the shots as well if she wants us to come and fetch the kids now i have to jump i have to jump pour petrol get it if i don't have money i need to make a plan pour petrol drive to Fort Lawrence to fetch the kids how many kids did you have with her two two mm. okay so he actually has three baby mamas um or four baby mamas. Wait. It's four. It's four yeah. baby mamas, ne? It's four. Four baby mamas. Yes. And that the I know of. Because there's this one. There's the other one mm -hmm. who disappeared to Cape Town, around Cape Town some, some way. Mm -hmm. um, she was also carrying his child. So... There's a possibility that there's five baby mamas, maybe six. We mm. don't know. But this one, the the love of his life when she came back, what happened? Um, his grandmother is the one who informed me that you know that you know what uh, that week when he was not taking your calls, blocking you, um, he was with this lady. We could not tell you because they were still fixing their things and the lady had to explain where is she coming from and she has a baby who looks exactly like your husband. So that's also his child. And within <laughs> that short space of time they already 
made a ritual, a ceremony for the child behind my back. And a week before that, he, he made up a sob story saying uh, he's struggling, uh, he needs 1.5, he's going to pay it back. So now I'm adding one plus one, okay. It was for that it stupid ceremony? It was for that small cer ceremony for, the, for his baby girl. After that, it was one thing after another. He took off our wedding ring, threw it away, and they both packed my clothes, and they threw them away. Yo, it so now that he was with the love of his life, what now happened to the second baby mama? I think she's also dumped somewhere. She doesn't want to comment. She doesn't want to say anything. She went all... That karma came very fast. <laughs> she went all silent. <laughs> that karma so shut don't know what is happening. We don't know what is happening right now My goodness. with her. We don't know how she's feeling about this whole thing. So this was last year, which month? July. July, okay. But then again, um, the family... Um, tried to convince us and I was also holding on I don't want to lie I was also holding on and uh, asking people to intervene and um, insisting that we should go for therapy maybe it's going to help us to, to save our marriage uh, I will also try again to accept this woman and the child you know that was me so, like, you were accepting that he's going to take a third wife now. A third wife now, yes. November, he and his family say to me, please come home. We need to have a meeting. And this meeting, you cannot miss it because uh, we have found a way mm -hmm. to save your marriage. Mm. But we are broke, we cannot help you with anything, but we have invited other elders from other part of the family. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you need to come home. Mm -hmm. Please make sure that you come home. So I had to pour petrol again. I had to buy groceries to make sure that I cater for everyone. Y you know? Only to find out that my husband wants to tell the family officially so that he does not love me. He does not want me anymore. Imagine driving your own car with your own petrol, traveling uh, for about 11 hours. <gasps> And you are catering for this man next to you. He's sitting right next to you. You are buying everything that you want. You ask him, are you hungry? Yes. You buy whatever he wants. He's taking you home to break up with you. Sure. So when now there, he obviously tells them that, you know what, it's over. I don't want to be with her anymore. What did the family say? Ah, the family took his side because now everything you could see that, no, man. This was planned, thoroughly so. He's standing there and he's telling family that I've been cheating on him. I'm sleeping with the pastors. I'm sleeping with the men from work. I'm sleeping with the doctors. I'm sleeping. Everybody who has ever helped, helped, helped me, I'm sleeping with that person. Hmm. So he takes me here to Eastern Cape so that he, he could go and embarrass me in front of his family. He made me a whore <laughs> in front of his family. And then I could not even defend myself. I yeah. cried out so loud. People thought somebody died because I could see right through them. Would, no man, this was a trap. You planned for this. They tricked me. When they invited me for this meeting, they tricked me. Only to realize now, because now he's, he's open about everything now. No, he, that was him uh, preparing the, the, the community 
the society, the family, um, for this the love, love of his love. Yes, the love, the, the love of his life. So after that, for you to come back, did you come back with him or you came back alone? I came back with him. Why? He did not have money to come back. How is that your business? Because he's now he saying that he did not have money to come back. And <laughs> you're going to laugh at this one. L later that evening, uh, they said to me, but there's um, a mixture, something like a muti, that, that they, have, they, they have to bath me with to take away all the bad luck and everything and they are certain that if I bath with that muti um, my marriage will be fixed and my husband and I will be able to to, to fix whatever things. to resolve things. Is this after he had told you he doesn't want you anymore? Yes. And then did you bath with it? Yes. Ma'am, we went to stand in the middle of the road next at to night. the graves at night. They bathed me, and from that moment, things got west between me and my husband. The last time I saw him, uh, he came to visit me on the 28th of January. He came to visit me and he was like, I, I, I miss you. I think I do want us to fix things. So please um, help me with petrol. Ah, he was broke. I sent him petrol and then he did come and he stayed with me for almost a week until first week of February. Second week of February, it's his birthday. I'm still excited, thinking, okay, we are getting there. Mm -hmm. ne? So now I'm preparing um, to surprise him for his, his birthday. birthday. And then in the morning, he sends me a message. I must not come. He doesn't want to see me. Um, he's very busy. Doesn't make sense. We were happy. Two days ago, we were happy. But today, <laughs> there's a place they call it Emerald mm -hmm. around Val. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you know that place. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. They took pictures there. That's where I used to take him to celebrate his birthdays, our anniversary, whatever. We usually go there. Mm -hmm. He takes his Nombandana, we call him Nombandana. <laughs> the love of his life. The love of his life to Emerald. They take pictures Post to show on Facebook. me. Yes, Facebook, TikTok. So that was basically the last time you actually saw him. Yes, and then when I confronted him this time around, he told me straight to my face, oh, good thing. Sissy, I want divorce. As you can see. So, have you filed for a divorce? He did. He filed. <laughs> yes. And he then filed for divorce. He's, he's claiming his fifty percent share of your pension fund and everything else. And then you know what does he have? And then he has the audacity to 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 say it loud publicly. That he never married me for love. So this is and a man. He, he discussed this with his second baby mama. And then up in the art, he discussed this with his true love before she disappeared. Actually, that he, he, he can go on and get married to me so that until, until. He's financially stable until he gets a better job, you know. Has he said this publicly? Yes. Do you have a video of that? I will check for you. Please. I will check for you no, and I, I will wanna, send it I to you. I want to actually advise you right now. So basically, legally, what you can do is that you don't have to get a divorce from him. That is actually great. Right now, today, when you go home, because this 
is gonna air i'm sure maybe i'll make sure it airs maybe on monday okay please get home take all the videos where he's talking about how it, this was never for love this was for money and everything save that so instead of a divorce you can actually get an an annulment so an annulment means he gets nothing from you you basically go and approach the court to say that this man scammed me into marriage so we were never married because he didn't marry me for the reasons that he actually said he's going to marry me then in that way you say i am asking for an annulment and not a divorce then in that way he cannot touch your pension fund he cannot touch anything that is under your name he will get nothing make sure that you get those videos what please. about uh, the contributions that I, I i did and there's another house that his aunt uh, promised me mm -hmm. Um, she asked me to send her money mm -hmm. and that she's going to help us to, to, to get a house in mm -hmm. Bumbu mm -hmm. in the Eastern Cape. Mm -hmm. it's that under too whose was, name? She asked for um, our marriage certificate. So, so the name is under whose name? Me and my husband. So if it's under both of you, then it means that the house should be sold and half half is given. Do you understand? But now where I'm getting to, I haven't seen the house yet. They keep saying, no, uh, the, the contractors are still busy with the house. Then if you actually but have... But the money is with them, and I want my house. Where is my house? So basically what you can do is that you can look for proof, right? Like, this is advice that, honestly, you can actually take if you're also in the same situation that she's at. What you actually do is that if you've got the conversations, even if they're through WhatsApp, you actually need to screenshot those, and then you need to print them out. Mm -hmm. And then you also need to screenshot the proof of payment, mm -hmm. right? The amount of money that you actually send and then you print that out you can be able to actually approach the court and you get your money back you okay. can be able to get mm -hmm. your money mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. so basically what you can do is that if the amount is over i think the amount of twenty thousand, then you have to go through the uh, um, like small lawyers. claims court no, small claims is for an amount that is under i think okay. twenty five thousand or twenty thousand. Okay. okay if it's more than that then you need to actually get a lawyer mm -hmm. that is actually going to draft and then it will be a lot of demand that okay it's either we need the house or we need the money they have to choose so if it is a house then they're going to look at the um, what the court this like the cost at what the house would be and then it would be sold and then you get your share of your money but the best route would be ask for your for your money back if they can't provide that money then they need to provide the house then when it comes to this man you can actually approach the court and ask for an annulment and not a divorce and when they ask why you actually say i was scammed into marriage then they will give you an annulment an annulment means that even when you sign if i'm signing a legal document i have to specify that i'm a divorcee with you it will say single because legally you were never married yeah. if you get an annulment so mm -hmm. that's something that you need to look at anyway obviously I know some of you guys will get bored with this but <laughs> I mean we'll still talk privately but you need to go and download those videos those videos will actually be your proof he thinks he is hurting you that can be the one thing that can actually save you instead of a divorce you get an annulment he doesn't mm -hmm. get a single cent mm -hmm. from you and then you continue with your life because he is definitely being very greedy and heartless a very yeah his grandmother gave us um a piece of land, land and uh, or, already it has a small flat mm -hmm. a very old flat so i had to renovate the flat i spent a lot like when you say a lot maybe how much plus minus um no it's not a lot 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 i things 30 35 mm, it's a lot of money yeah mm, it's a lot yeah trying to renovate that flat and but i think she, the grandmother was genuine mm -hmm. was starting to like me genuinely so but because um she's too old they overpower her mm. you know so the that place it's under whose name that place mm -hmm. she 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 verbally gave it to us but legally it's not under you you guys' name. No. Yeah. So this is also one of it's just it belongs to me and him but it verbally. was a verbal agreement. That's why I always advise women to say no matter how how much you're in love, never ever build a house at your husband's place. Never ever renovate any house at your husband's house. Ne. Unless if you are actually saying that's a gift. To whoever and you're doing it not because i'm married to these people or because of whatever you're doing it simply because that's just something that is from your own heart the 
best thing to actually do is that if you get married and maybe your husband is like let's build a house you should actually tell him listen i want us to buy our own land that will rather be under our name and then we'll build our house because i'll give you an example my ex's family wanted us to build a house there you understand they now i'm out do. so it means i would have built a house for another woman to come and occupy do you understand what I'm saying? Because mm. there's nothing you can do. Mm. And legally, you can't even go and actually, um, if you go and actually, like, maybe take a TLB and put the house down, they arrest you. Like, that is a destroying power party. So, that's something that I really honestly cannot um, advise. Until something is legally under your name and you see your name or part of your name in that, you don't invest anything in that. Because right now, legally, there is really no way you can go from what I know. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I've dealt with lawyers a lot. You know, I've heard a lot of stuff. So, when it comes to this, it is really just honestly unfortunate. But looking at the fact that you actually met this man with nothing almost, right? And then you basically watched him what advice would you have that is your camera to a woman that is now going for a brokey a broke man that is staying in a shack what would you say give the person advice yo nana like i know there's still women out there who are like me we want to prove to the world that um there are still women who can genuinely love a guy Mm-hmm. Even if he has nothing, because um, there's this uh, stigma going around that women will only be with a man with money. I'm part yes. of these people. <laughs> a proud <laughs> member. <laughs> You're a proud member. Yeah, no, I'm not dating a broke guy. I've said this many, many times. I will leave you for being broke the moment please, I realize. Please, please learn from me. Rather, they, they, they insult us and mm. call us bomachosha and whatnot. Mm. We are selling our bodies, uh, whatever. But learn. Please learn a lesson. I learned it the hard way. I am struggling to get over this. Like, yo. It keeps me awake at night to think how much I've sacrificed, how much I've compromised for this man. And I even went against my own principles. You understand? I even embarrassed uh, my my, my father's surname, Mm. you know? Mm. Because, I mean, marrying yourself, I I literally married myself. Did you give him money to go pay Lobola? Yes. How much did you give him? Plus my You don't want to know. Please. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> and then you also spent, you spent all And because room. I don't have um, family, yeah. so I took my father's friend just to make it look like, you know. And he was there with pride, knowing with this money, Im- Imaliom Fas. Yes, what yes. I, Actually, I, I wanted everybody to, 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 I wanted everybody to, to, to see him as this dignified man, you understand? Mm. Yes, even in church, they respected him. They thought he actually is very much. Yes, he's a very. Yeah. No, good I also meant the, 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 the hard way. Yes, yes. Never stroke a man's ego. A man's ego should be stricken by his own money. A man that has no money does not have a right to have a And these love ego scammers. What? Yes. Most of them. Oh, they are very handsome mm. and they are sweet talkers. Listen, if my husband walks in here, right now you can't believe and speaks with you <laughs> oh i mean you will say ah and and it is you you are the problem this is this is such a humble man so spoken <laughs> and he even when he is crushing your confidence he's gonna do it Nicely. Nicely. So I remember when he told me that I'm ugly <gasps> and that's the reason he, he married me anyway because he was advised by the gents that uh, if you want a wife that will build you a home, go for the ugliest from your Imagine. girlfriends. Imagine. Go, from the, uh, go for the, the ugliest. Nerve. The way you're because so the beautiful. Ugliest, no. They have brains and they uh, power. He was and they... just trying to destroy <laughs> your confidence. The way you're so beautiful, eh? You now have he's no telling idea. the world. You, I will send you some of his TikTok videos. He's telling them that I'm, I, I stink, I'm too fat, I'm ugly, I'm too old, and I bewitched him. But you, the thing is, you, it's almost like you're talking about my ex. That's exactly. We don't. I've bewitched him. No, that's actually just a strategic way. I'm not to, his type. I'm not. 
African nah, kind of woman that, that you would yeah, go for. I mean, I was also called ugly. He also did say online that I'm ugly. Look at her, blah blah blah. She looks so old, blah blah blah. That's actually like a way to try and still control you, even though they're no longer there. So it's to actually basically say that you know they're gonna brand you as a dirty person, so that even the next man mm. that actually comes, he's gonna think like, ah, Mara, they said she smells, so I need to pass. Um, and even yourself, you you. you, you, you it's hard for you uh, to, but to no. believe anybody now who tells you that hey beautiful mm. uh, you be like but ah. you are very beautiful trust and believe if your ex doesn't know my ex and they say the same thing then it means it's a strategic thing once they see that they've now lost you you understand what I'm saying that's something that they do so it has nothing to do with you I also never even took it personally because I was it like is. bruh like Jew is not Mr. South Africa so you know but anyway um, I mean obviously we are actually wrapping up right now um what is the biggest lesson that you can say you learned through all this never trust someone to that extent yeah never and um never allow love Mm. to control you Mm. to overpower you Mm. you know yeah yes and i would also like justice system to take note of these scams yeah serious yeah so he basically loved you to scam you yes he wanted your pension fund the same twitter thread that i saw of 10,000 and he wanted me whatever. to maintain him to my chain you, bo- you know no, but as i said we are still going to talk behind the scenes mm. you definitely need to fight for an annulment and not a divorce make sure that this man gets nothing from you i'm still going to talk to you obviously after this but anyway ninjas we actually have run out of time i absolutely love you guys so so much i wish we actually had more time so that we can dive into more things but your yeah. story is literally just one of a shock and I do hope that you guys out there can actually learn and know what I was saying that love scammers are not only foreigners even our South African gents are scamming yes. they will marry yes. you for your pension yes. fund yes. But and they are way, very clever they are very very clever, very clever. so anyway you just I love you guys so so much stay blessed and of course don't forget to leave your comments I will see you guys in our next episode bye, bye. bye.